All right, in this video, we're going to play some more with some Taylor series. Um, you see this first one, this is a multiple choice question. It says, which of the following uh, Taylor series is generated by f of x? Okay, so I'm going to write f of x is 1 over x. Also could be written as x to the negative first. So the derivative will be negative 1x to the negative second. The next derivative would be 2x to the negative third. The next derivative would be negative 6x to the negative fourth. The fourth derivative would be 24x to the negative fifth. Okay. Evaluating that at, at uh, x equals 1, we would get 1. We would get negative 1, we get 2, negative 6, and 24. So if I begin to think about what this series will look like, it's going to be uh, 1 multiplied by x minus 1 to the 0 over 0 factorial, uh, minus 1 times x minus 1 to the first over 1 factorial, plus 2 x minus 1 squared over 2 factorial. And notice that 2 divided by 2 factorial is 1. And the next one would be, I'm going to kind of go down here, minus 6, x minus 1 cubed over 3 factorial. Well, 6 divided by 3 factorial is 1. And last one would be 24, x minus 1 the fourth over 4 factorial, 24 divided by 4 factorial is 1. So the coefficient's always 1, it's alternating, and we've got x minus 1 to the nth power, uh, so it is letter E. The next one, uh, let f be defined by the function, find the interval of convergence. Uh, well, we'd have you know, 2 x plus 2 cubed over n plus 1 over 2x plus 2 over 3 to the nth. And we need to do the limit as n approaches infinity. Well, the 2's cancel. Uh, this whole thing cancels with that. So we just need to know when x plus 2 over 3 is between 1 and and negative 1. So multiply everything by 3. Subtract 2. And then we would need to uh, check the endpoints. Um, in this case, if I plugged in 1, let's start with that, I'd have 1 plus 2, I'd have 3 over 3 to the nth, that is not going to converge, right? We need to be less than 1. This one, negative 5, negative 5 plus 2 uh, is negative 3 over 3. That negative 1 to the nth is also not going to. So the endpoints do not make it converge, so this is the interval of convergence. The last thing says, find the function that the series represents. Now this is kind of tricky, but I want you to just notice that this thing is geometric. Okay, it's geometric because it's something to the nth power. And remember, x is a number. You know, we're just plugging in that number. So the series, you know, when we add up all the terms of a series, if we could add up an infinite number of terms, if we could add them all up, we would get the real function. You know, if we add it up, if it was possible to add up this infinite series, we'd get 1 over x at x equals 1. So... There, the fact that this is geometric, if I want to know, okay, if I added up all the terms, what would the series be? Well, that just means we need the sum of this geometric series. The sum is the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio. Well, the ratio is x plus 2 over 3. And the first term, if you plugged in 0, you know, you'd have... Uh, 
something to the zero power is one, so this is just two, like that. So we'd have two over, when we think about a common denominator here, I'd have three minus x minus two all over three. Okay, so three minus x minus two, um, and multiplying by the reciprocal, I'd have six over one minus x. This is the sum. And we put an arrow there. That's the sum of that geometric series. And remember, if I could add up the infinite number of terms, I'd represent the function. So the sum does represent the function. So that's the function for that geometric series. Here I just want to show you how we could do some manipulation and, and prove some, some derivatives. Um, it's kind of just a fun exercise. All right, so sine... Remember, is approximately this. Oh, sorry. And so on. It's the series. like that. Okay. If I did the derivative of this, okay. well the derivative of x is 1, the derivative of x cubed, so we have 3x squared over 3 factorial, which, of course, um, 3 divided by 3 factorial is just 2 factorial. 5 divided by 5 factorial is just 4 factorial. 7 divided by 7 factorial is 6 factorial. Oh, I, I missed this one power. I forgot to reduce. Okay. So I have 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial, which is approximately cosine. And I could write the real series, and of course it would be cosine. And all that would show, uh, you know, the power drops by 1. We'd put that here so it would end up being uh, x to the 2n over 2n factorial. Still have that negative 1 out front. Right? The rules of derivatives show us that cosine is, in fact, the derivative of sine. All right, we're going to use the power series for the 1 over 1 plus x squared to find the Maclaurin series for the inverse tangent of x. So 1 over 1 plus x, it's a Maclaurin series, you know, we should, we should know. and so on. Uh, so it's that. Okay. So if I plug in x squared instead, it becomes x squared squared, x squared cubed, x squared to the fourth. That still alternates, but now it's x squared to the n, or x to the 2n.
Well, if I integrate this, because remember the integral of that is inverse tangent. Okay, so now let's integrate. Well, the integral of 1 is x. We got 1 third x cubed plus 1 fifth x to the fifth minus 1 seventh x to the seventh plus 1 ninth x to the ninth. Okay. So I'm still alternating. Now I've got x to the 2n plus 1 because I've had to raise the power by 1 and I divide by 2n plus 1. And this is then the series for inverse tangent. So there's a lot of manipulation we can do here to get the series we want. Let me just kind of backtrack through this. If, if I want to figure out you know, this series, I can use 1 over 1 plus x, which is this Taylor series. Uh, instead of an x, I put in an x squared, so I just sub every time I add an x, I put in an x squared, so it became you know x squared squared, x squared cubed, x squared to the fourth. And here then, instead of x, I had x squared. Remember, this could be x to the 2n. Well, then I integrated it. I integrated every single term. When you integrate, you raise the power by 1 and divide by the new power. Well, the integral of this is inverse tangent. So this must make that series the series that represents inverse tangent. So we can use our series that we know, and we can manipulate them with integrals, derivatives, with multipliers, with substitutions, to get new series that we don't know.